Hey, it's Aaron, and today I am just basically doing a follow-up video to the last one I did uh, about Jimmy Dore and the Boogaloo Boy. So I got a lot of different questions about this, but one question kept coming up, and I think that it was mainly a misconception from the video that I did. Um, the question that just kept coming up was, so you think that we shouldn't align with the working class? And that's not exactly what I said. I, actually, I never said anything like that at all. Um, and today we're going to talk a little bit about that. So with all that being said, let's jump into it. Okay, so the first thing that I want to say is that I have absolutely no problem with allying with the working class. I actually think that's probably one of our main goals as communists, as socialists, as anarchists, um, is to make sure that we are not just trying to unite um, the left, right, all the different factions or whatever, uh, but we're trying to have unity among all working people. Now, that isn't necessarily possible in every situation. There are a lot of different working people who have a lot of different uh, belief structures and ideas and things that are going to conflict with uh, one another, right? Um, a lot of working class people are probably going to have center right, maybe somewhat center left, but, you know, center right, center left views, uh, which don't necessarily align with socialism. Most people are lump and proletariat. They are not class conscious. They have no idea um, that they're being completely uh, swindled and, and scammed their entire lives out of their uh, <laughs> out of the product of their labor. Um but we want to be able to set up a situation where we can teach those people that they are being screwed over and we can finally align ourselves with all of those people so we can overthrow the bourgeoisie and uh, march in a new socialistic revolution, which is, you know, the plan. Um, but a lot of people in my uh, comment section were saying that... Uh, I was watching this Jimmy Dore video, I was listening to what this uh, Boogaloo boy said, and I wasn't leaving any room for movement. I wasn't saying that we should uh, even talk to these people, that they're all lost causes and that sort of thing, and I never actually said that. Um, is this one specific Boogaloo boy a lost cause? Well, I don't know. I just finished watching a couple of different videos that specifically talked about him himself, and he runs around with some dirty crew members. Uh, some of those people, they are, uh, you know, classified as terrorists and this sort of thing. Um, it, the, it, whether or not the government classifies the Boogaloo Boys or the Proud Boys, whatever, as terrorists, the government is also terrorists. So terrorists calling each other terrorists, yeah, it's a bunch of fucking terrorists doing it to each other. <laughs> but regardless, um, there was some information that came out about that individual uh, that didn't look so good. He hung around with a lot of people that did some pretty bad stuff um, and who hold very, very uh, radical, bad beliefs. This one individual even kind of endorsed the idea of Kyle Rittenhouse killing a bunch of people. Now, he didn't say Kyle Rittenhouse is a great guy. I don't know if he said that because they basically scrubbed all of his information off of the internet. Um, but what little you could find about it, he did say that people should be training to do things like Kyle Rittenhouse. So that's not exactly the kind of person that I want to immediately jump into an allegiance with. Um, whenever leftists are talking about having allegiances or alliances with uh, other factions and this, that, and the other thing, um, sometimes it has to do with tactical unity, right? When it comes to liberals, when it comes to uh, Marxist-Leninists, that sort of thing. Um, anarchists and socialists have an idea that, you know, have an affinity for those sorts of people because we kind of, maybe not liberals, but definitely Marxist-Leninists, um, we want to have virtually the same uh, end result. And a lot of the goals and a lot of the means that we use to get there um, are the same as well, especially at the beginning stages when it's basically just on-the-ground work. But... When it comes to the far right, when it comes to the ultra right, when it comes to the ultra nationalists, when it comes to the fascists, uh, that's when our views start to diverge. Yes, we might have some ideas that are similar, right? But they are not trying to get the same sort of thing as we are. What they're trying to essentially do is create either a dictatorship or a situation where um, basically uh, capitalism has become unfettered and the markets are completely free and that would result virtually in just a reversion back to feudalism. Or worse, it would revert back to slavery. In either case, it's not a good idea. And I actually think that allying yourselves with fascists and um, nationalists and that sort of thing, ultra-nationalists, 
um, does have historical precedent. But before we jump into an alliance with the devil, maybe talk to your neighbor. Maybe talk to your friend. Maybe talk to your family. Maybe talk to your colleagues, your comrades, and other people that aren't already going down that alt-right fascist pipeline. Now, I understand that there is uh, a certain need to try to bring back a lot of those people because you don't want to have the enemy have all of the fucking people, right? You don't want the enemy to be able to indoctrinate and bring in a bunch of people onto their side because that would make your side not as strong. It's just numbers, right? Um, so clearly there is precedent for uh, trying to get people to come over from that side. I would say that the first place that you start would probably not be with the fascists, but... If anybody knows my backstory, I am an ex-fascist myself. I used to run around with a lot of uh, uh, neo-Nazi groups. I wasn't a good guy, and I didn't have good opinions. And over time, I learned more. I understood more. I got to talk to more leftists who had good points. Um, and I got to talk to a lot of different people who were of different various backgrounds, races, religions, and that sort of thing. And it made me realize that the path I was going down was horribly wrong and that people are essentially equal and they should be treated as equals. Now, does that mean that every single uh, person that's falling down the alt-right pipeline or any person that started to begin to get fascist tendencies or ideas is 100% reachable? No. Some people are going to be completely unreachable and they're never going to be able to be moved from one position to another. Are all of the people that are within that category like that? Probably not. No, I would say that many of them aren't, and many of them can move from one place to another. I know that since I have the background that I do, I've been able to move people from the right to the left, and not just to the left, but to the far left, and turn people that were, you know, essentially uh, bigoted racists into some of the most vehement comrades I've ever seen. And they would literally destroy any Nazi they seen on the street. In fact, a lot of people that are uh, that do IRL action talk about how um, people that were actually able to come out of that um, aspect of it, when people are able to actually uh, come out of the hate of fascism and that sort of thing and actually see the truth for what it is, some of those people can be the strongest comrades around. But again... That is contextual. You're not going to be able to change everybody, and you yourself might not be the perfect messenger for uh, that person. Sometimes it's not even the message, it's the messenger, right? So you might not be able to change that person. That person might not be able to be changed. And also, you, don't, you might not even want to try to change that person because you personally, you might feel as though you don't have the emotional capability or the emotional strength to deal with somebody that has such horrible, terrible, ridiculous views. You might feel as though that person is a complete threat to your safety, your health, and even your life. And if that's the case, then you don't even entertain the idea of talking to those people. You ignore them and you leave them for somebody who maybe wants to talk to them or is able to talk to them and change their mind that way. But that's not something that every single person should do. It's not even something that most people should do. That's something that a small variety, a small contingency of people that have expertise in the matter, that actually have some experience in that situation, uh, could do. Now, um, one person that deals with this sort of thing, uh, I haven't talked to them in a while, but I know that they were doing this a while back, uh, was Faraday Speaks. They were trying to do... Um, they were basically setting things up so they could de-radicalize people. And I think that that work needs to be done. But it's definitely not work everybody should be doing because it's very technical. It's very difficult. But it could also lead to you making the wrong move and turning that person either further to the right or having that person change you and move you to the right. And that's not something that you want to do either. And that's a very real problem. Uh, Right-wingers and a lot of different uh, groups... They intentionally try to infiltrate leftist spaces and try to push their narratives so they can change people's minds and move them to a third position or to conservatism. Um, and that's a classic tactic of fascism and Nazism. They've always done that sort of thing. They've always tried to pie piper uh, the less vigilant <laughs> leftists into a position where they actually become fascists themselves. Um, and I've seen that happen before too. But the idea that I'm somehow against uniting the working class um, is just horribly inaccurate. It's not even close to the truth. 
uh, and it completely goes against my own backstory. Uh, I personally believe that if you have the power, if you have the ability, you should try to talk to everybody and move them to the left. Some people it's not going to be possible, but for those that it is, that's kind of our job. If people in the world knew how badly they were getting screwed by their government, if people in the world knew how bad uh, the system of capitalism is and how much it keeps, a, keeps us all under repression and oppression, then nobody would want to stand for it. And it's up to us to inform those people so they know that they shouldn't stand for it. That's basically our job as socialists. It's our job in referring to spreading class consciousness. Um, that's essentially what our job is right now while we're building the world that we want to see. So should we engage in conversations with fascists and with boogaloos um, and with right-wingers and that sort of thing? Maybe. If you yourself think that you can handle that kind of conversation and you want to indulge in that sort of thing, then that is your prerogative. But absolutely no one should feel as though they are forced to talk to these people. And absolutely no one should be put into a position where they feel personally threatened uh, or vulnerable or like their life or their health is in danger in any way by associating with these people. So uh, that's basically all I wanted to say. Just kind of a quick update. Anyway, my name is Aaron. That's my show. Thank you very much for watching. If you do get a chance, please check out all the links in the description box below. Hit that little bell button because you know that they're not going to let you know when I release a new video. And make sure you're subscribed because they're unsubscribing people every single day. Thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day.